Yo, team. My name's Ben, and let's talk pulmonary embolism. So, let's break down the word. Pulmonary means lungs, and an embolism is a substance that's traveling through the bloodstream. So, it could be fat, a thrombus, clot, air, or a tumor. So, some substance that's flowing through the bloodstream, and it's going to lodge and cause a problem. So, in this instance, pulmonary is going to lodge in our lungs. Be really careful of this. Um, some people get confused and think if it's lodged in the lungs, it's going to block the airway. But remember, it's in our circulation. So this clot is going to block the blood supply to the lungs. All right, so how does it happen? So let's get back into our heart. So here is our body. And the blood from above the heart comes in by the superior vena cava. Blood from below the heart comes into the heart by the inferior vena cava, and it comes to the right side of the heart, then into the right ventricle, and then up the pulmonary arteries, take the blood to the lungs. So where does the clot come from? So someone could have had a fractured bone, and the that gets released from the marrow in the bone and that could enter the bloodstream and go via the right side of the heart into the lungs or we could have a, a clot. So if we have atrial fibrillation where the atrium doesn't fully contract and it just kind of wobbles, then any time the blood is stagnant and isn't moving, it wants to clot. So if we had AF, and we've got a clot forming in here. If the clot got dislodged, it would go into the right ventricle, up into the pulmonary circulation, and get stuck in a blood vessel in the lungs. So that could be one way a clot could end up through AF, or this, this lucky dude could have gone on a long trip overseas and he sat down for a long time. And if you sit down without moving, your blood gets stagnant, especially in the dependent or low down areas. So he could get a deep vein thrombosis in his calf. So a DVT. If he got a deep vein thrombosis, thrombosis in his calf, his calf would feel a bit tight. So he'd go and give it a rub, get a massage, and he could knock that thrombosis off into his bloodstream and it can become an embolus which then floats through the right side of his heart into his right ventricle and up into his pulmonary circulation until that embolism lodges in a small blood vessel and cuts off the blood supply to that portion of the lung. All right, so what symptoms would this person have if they've got a PE? So you imagine if the blood supply to this portion of the lung is cut off, then we're going to struggle oxygenating blood. So they'll have hypoxia. Their oxygen saturations will decrease. They're, they're going to be short of breath. They're going to have dyspnea. Where this is, it's going to be painful. So they'll have chest pain, unilateral, so whatever side that clot is in. Because the heart is going to want to try to push that blood through, but it's stuck, the heart rate's going to increase, so we're going to get tachycardia, and we're also going to get hypotension. So the right side of the heart is pumping, and it can't get all the way through, then also it's going to affect how much blood can return from the lungs into the left side of the heart, and then out the atrium, and into the ventricle, and then out the aorta. So if we've got a pulmonary embolism, and less blood is traveling through the lungs back to the left side of the heart, then we're going to have decreased blood pressure with associated increased heart rate trying to compensate for that. All right, team. There's our pulmonary embolism. Happy studying.